So, dear participants, welcome. Welcome to our today's meeting. And I believe that today it will be about possibilities. It will be about professional growth. It will be about unique possibilities for you to go ahead, to develop and to receive new knowledge. So, with great pleasure to open our today's meeting, to open our today's workshop within Kyiv National Tarashevchenko University and Silicon Valley, the rector of Kyiv National Tarashevchenko University, Volodymyr Bogrov. Отож, друзі, із величезною радістю надаю слово для того, аби урочисто відкрити наш сьогоднішній захід ректору Київського національного університету імені Тараса Шевченка, професору Володимира Анатолійовича Богрову. Володимир Анатолійович, дуже дякуємо за те, що попри дуже щільний графік, я знаю, ви сьогодні і з нами, і, будь ласка, вам слово. Дякую, пане Володимире. Насправді, через п'ять хвилин я в Маріленді. Зараз я тут, так, ми згадуємо всі Гаррі Поттера, і от чарівний Порошок, і через п'ять хвилин я в Маріленді буду, так. Good afternoon, dear friends, dear professors, dear colleagues, dear students. On behalf of Taras Shevchenko National University of Kyiv, I present my compliments to the uh, our community, our academic community, uh, and also express my sincere gratitude for inviting me to this unique uh, event. I am very grateful for the uh, invitation because uh, we present to all, all the world, to all our friends uh, in the United States, in Europe. We present that our university, our community is alive. Despite the fact that we are facing war and uh, damages to our university's buildings, historical heritage of our academia and our country, we are keeping resilient and continue all, all, all uh, kinds of our teaching, learning, research, non-academic activities, and uh, uh, we discuss about our uh, life in, in Kyiv, in Ukraine, with our friends from all, from whole world. Uh, we cannot allow the educational process to be terminated or interrupted because our country, our, our city, our university is in need of well-educated professionals uh, who are willing to defend our people, uh, rebuild and build a state that will take a decent place among the European nation, among the uh, civil, civilization, uh, civilized nation, and that's why I am very glad to see a uh, few. I am very glad to uh, uh, start this, this wonderful event. And uh, uh, last but not least, I think uh, this is uh, that's about uh, of our situation. Uh, many thanks all brave defenders of Ukraine who uh, made possibility, who made possible uh, take part in this wonderful event. Thank you very much. Слава Україні! Ми переможемо! Героям слава! Неодмінно переможемо! Thanks a lot, the Rector of Kyiv National Taras Shevchenko University, Professor Volodymyr Bogrov. Thanks a lot for this introduction. Thanks very much for the support of this event and possibilities for students of Kyiv National Taras Shevchenko University. Thanks a lot to the Mechanics and Mathematics faculty for these possibilities, because these course of data science and business intelligence it is conducted within Mechanics and Mathematics faculty. And with great pleasure for the greeting of our participants and for welcome words, please, the Dean of Mechanics and Mathematics Faculty of Tarashevchenko National University of Kyiv, Professor Aksana Bezushak, please welcome and thanks for joining us and thanks for these possibilities for our students. Welcome. Thank you, Volodya. Доброго ранку, добрий день, доброго вечора. В залежності від того, де хто знаходиться, the participants of our event, I would like to warmly greet all of you. 
we consider this event to be extremely important and uh, useful for the contemporary science and economy as uh, data science and business intelligence tools are expected to be the main drivers for the future. Not only tools are intelligent, but uh, so are the students uh, who strive to achieve their full potential. Nevertheless, we have to keep in mind that our brave Ukrainian military forces are the main ones uh, we need to be grateful to. So I wish all of us the best of the corresponding relevant place and glory to Ukraine. Slava Ukraini. Thanks a lot. Heroim Slava. Thanks a lot for this introduction. Thanks a lot for these words. And thanks very, very much for the possibilities which Mechanics and Mathematics faculty opens for its students. Because we know about further next speaker and with great pleasure please the head of the department of probability theory statistics and actual mathematics of Tarashevchenko national university of kiev professor yulia mishura please welcome to our stage thank you very much uh, vladimir and uh, it is my great pleasure to say some welcome words to participants of this open lecture and the whole course of lecture. I am impressed by the number of people who wish to get the new knowledge in such modern uh, field as uh, data science and uh, related topics. It is very nice that the wave of education is continuous and is permanent. And uh, I hope very much that uh, all our education and uh, especially this course uh, will lead to more uh, possibility of uh, for you to be creative and uh, to think think on all subjects uh, uh, it happens so that in the modern world uh, the possibility to think to analyze and uh, to uh, make the conclusions is uh, make the proper conclusions is one of the most important now so I wish you great success to this course, to all of you, and uh, uh, it is my pleasure to welcome you again. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And thank you for all the steps which the Department of Probability Series, Statistics and Actual Mathematics of Mechanics and Mathematics Faculty is doing in order to move ahead these new sciences, new areas such as business intelligence, data science, financial and actuarial mathematics, and well, it is of great honor to be one of the first uh, graduates of these specialities and now to conduct this workshop within Mechanics and Mathematics faculty. Thank you very much for this science and for these first steps to data science. Thanks a lot, and we're moving further. With great pleasure, please welcome to our stage the Deputy Dean of the Faculty of Computer Science and Cybernetics, Elena Kapustian. Thank you very much for joining us. And Professor Elena Kapustian, please welcome, please, your words. Thank you very much. Uh, so nice to uh, see you all here, uh, dear colleagues and guests of this e uh, event. Uh, on behalf uh, of the Dean of the Faculty of Computer Science and Cybernetics, I heartily congratulate you on the opening of such uh, required course, Data Analytics. Um, in my opinion, uh, such activities are very important for students studying mathematics, statistics, applied mathematics, system analysis, or computer science. Um, to my mind, uh, for them, this course would be very useful for professional growth. Uh, you know, today, Ukrainians are scattered all over the world. But wherever they are, they must do everything to bring Ukraine's victory closer. Obtaining new knowledge and skills is important for the future development and reconstruction of our country. 
Ukrainians uh, should become more educated, stronger, smarter. They must show the whole world that despite pain and all troubles, they are not poor refugees or people without hope, but real brave and strong spirited people. It's the best way to honor our brave men and women uh, in uniform. The example of uh, bravery inspires us with confidence in our ultimate victory. Uh, let me take this opportunity to thank uh, the people of uh, United States uh, for their comprehensive support and uh, assistance to Ukraine, as well as our friends here. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, this is another manifestation of uh, strong solidarity of the United States with uh, those who defend uh, justice, independence, and freedom. Uh, I'm very proud to be here uh, with you today and sincerely believe in success of uh, this uh, intended course. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot for joining. Thanks a lot for the possibilities to our students. And thank you very much for our joint events, which we conduct together in order to provide our students additional unique possibilities. Thanks a lot for our collaboration and looking forward to our next events, to our conferences, to our workshops, to our hackathons. It's of great pleasure and of great importance in the current time. Thanks a lot and with great pleasure. Please, the acting head of student parliament of mechanics and mathematics faculty, Polina Alexandrova, please welcome. The idea of this series of workshops actually belongs to Polina. So, Please, a few words of introduction and welcome to our participants and in general, what is how the idea to conduct this series of webinars has taken place? What is it about? And a few words about our course. Uh, thank you so much. If you don't mind, I'll switch to Ukrainian. <laughs> uh, Otosh. А, ідея курсу виникла ще півтора роки тому, вже частково ми розказували цю історію, і ми раді продовжувати її і е, ділитися е, прикладними навичками з ринку, так би мовити, щоб всі студенти е, мали е, вже якийсь е, старт в своїй якійсь професійній кар'єрі. Е, отож, раді вас вітати. Е, Сподіваємось, що вам сподобається курс. І взагалі кажучи, дякуємо, що ви знаходите в собі сили приєднуватися на наші івенти, знаходити в собі сили не просто вставати з ліжка і просто якось намагатись вижити, а ще й розвиватись, навчатись, долучатись до таких можливостей, як зараз. І просто хочу, щоб ви знали, що і сприймали себе як вже таких героїв. І... Те, що ми робимо, це все на нашу спільну перемогу, і на нашому навчальному фронті ми цю перемогу таким чином наближуємо. Тож дякую і слава Україні! Героям слава! Дуже дякую за ці можливості, за ці слова і за безліч унікальних насправді подій, які відкриваєте для студентів. And, well, going further on, I see that nearly 200 participants are currently on our call, on our workshop, and it's really great. So I believe that it will be really about the very interesting possibilities sources and the very interested communication between our participants and well speaking about the course in general what is ahead what we will look for while taking part in this course so definitely it is about the basics of data analytics it is about different possibilities to work with data with excel with cloud technologies with aws with microsoft azure with different cloud technologies in order to take data to real value, to make implementations of these data and to go ahead with different sources, possibilities, different mobile applications, and so on and so forth. Focusing on the tasks we will work with, it is about data science use cases. We will implement lots of practical tasks. We will work in groups. We will make different types of activities in order afterwards at the end of this course to make pitches to present the solutions and the real use cases you will work with other participants of this course. Yes, it is about programming skills. It's about 
artists about different programming languages in order to make initial data exploration, data visualization, data preprocessing, and after that, definitely model deployment in order to test accuracy, in order to estimate where is this model really what you need, your client needs actually. And well, all these steps will be conducted during this course. So we are on the start of the great way, the great way of implementation of skills, of knowledge, and definitely it is also about mathematical and statistical background in order to implement all these. Because, well, speaking about application, the application is good by the theoretical basis, but mathematics and statistics, what is on the back end of this application, it is really of great value, of great importance, and you need to invest lots of time in order to receive these skills. We will communicate about all this and we will combine hard skills and soft skills for our implementation skills. Well, first of all, yeah, you need to test, you need to explore data, you need to make data preprocessing, data visualization, model deployment. But afterwards, you need to communicate with invest, you need to apply soft skills, you need to present the solution. Also, you need to communicate with business, with different stakeholders, which needs to use your application. Because is it really what your client needs? That is the question. But during this course, we will give lots of answers to these questions. Ми тим часом рухаємось далі по нашій програмі, тому що як уже озвучував, дуже у нас усе щільно, дуже у нас усе потужно. And with great pleasure, our next speaker. Thank you very much for the support of this project. Thank you very much for the organization of this uh, possibility to communicate with United States of America and with Silicon Valley. So with great pleasure, please welcome to our stage Daria Kosharitz, Director of the University of Artificial Intelligence and Digitalization. Professor Daria Kosharitz, please welcome. Welcome to our stage and the floor is yours. будуть чаклувати для того, аби почути звук, аби все спрацювало. Мікрофончик бачу поки що зам'ючений. Never mind, it is one of the most popular phrases of the COVID times. You are muted. Nevertheless, please unmute yourself and please welcome to our stage in order to present our participants. And well, today it is about the great amount of possibilities. It is about communication with speakers. It is about interaction. It is about the community itself. Ми, друзі, розуміємо те, що самі по собі Кожен з нас може зробити дуже багато, але якщо ми об'єднаємося, якщо сила командної синергії почне працювати, оце вже про справжні можливості. Професор Дарія Кошерець, please, welcome. Uh, hello, I'm very glad for all of you, for all of our speakers. Так? Uh, хочу вас привітати з тим, що ми розпочали курс дата аналітики. І uh, хочу сказати, що до цього був досить складний шлях. Перебуваючи зараз тут в Сполучених Штатах Америки, спілкуючись з роботодавцями, спілкуючись з інвесторами, стало зрозуміло, що найбільш затребувана професія, найбільш затребувана зараз – це є дата аналітики. Я хочу вам показати дата аналітики, дата сантисти, дата менеджменти і... Знаєте ви чи ні, але 90% всієї дати було сформовано за останні два роки. І ринки настільки швидко і бізнеса розвиваються, що фахівців катастрофічно не вистачає. Дата аналітики, дата сайенс, їх зараз на ринку Америки забирають з великими, за великі-великі кошти. Для камеру виключу сюди зіць. The okay. participants, please mute yourself, because that is time for our speakers to communicate. Thanks a lot. Sorry. За великі, великі кошти зараз нанімають. І е, погляд, звісно, е, сконцентровує зараз на українських фахівців, тому що українські фахівці е, користуються великою популярністю е, серед ринку Америки, Канади, Австралії. Всі нас вважають креативними розумними, здатними і е, з тими, з ким легко працювати. І навіть якщо беруться до розгляду індуси, китайці, японці, то пріоритет чомусь е, лягає саме на українців. Це е, такий інсайт з е, Сполучених Штатів Америки, Силіконової долини, з е, 
Сан-Франциско, тобто з тих міст, які зараз впроваджують нові тренди, нові професії і диктують свої правила бізнесу. Тому зараз я трошки хочу вам показати невеличку презентацію, якщо ви дозволите мені зробити шерінг екрану, Володя, так? Так, все дозволено. Я зараз буквально секундочку, бо трошки у нас із американським часом це все по... це все... Наша Євна інтерактивна можливість для наших учасників. Ми ще підготували невеличкий квест, якщо у нас перед наступним спікером ще 5 хвилиночок залишиться для того, аби випробування для наших учасників провести, то теж будемо вдячні. Ну, це якщо час буде, то такому випадку ми готові. Так, давайте я дуже швидочко, да, ви, Володь, ви тоді час коригуйте. Так, я прошу шер екрана тоді, так, шер скрін. Так, ну що? Дозволено ділитися екранчиком, все повинно працювати. Думаю, що зараз все спрацює, я буду продовжувати чаклувати. Бачите, не чаклувало, все, повітряної тривоги немає. Це чудово. Так, ну що, трошки проходимо, розповімо все-таки про, що ж таке Data Science. Взагалі вважається, що програма, на яку ви пішли, я дуже її добре знаю, тому що ми з Володю теж обговорюємо деякі проекти. Дійсно, ви можете зараз за 20, взагалі, ми так рахували, що за 24 тижня можна опанувати, повністю опанувати скіли дата-аналітика і вже зайти в професію. Тому дуже раді тому, що зараз є такі швидкі можливості. Тобто, які є потенціали і які є бенефіти. 94% дата-сентистів, дата-аналітиків, дата-менеджерів, які закінчують своє навчання, вони отримують роботу. При цьому така тенденція спостерігається не лише останні два роки, а це вже протягом 2011 року. І друга така для вас, як мотиваційна, і так, ми розуміємо, що з професією дата-аналітику ви можете отримати роботу, навіть працюючи в Україні, але на світових ринках і отримати 120 тисяч доларів за рік. Тобто це вже дуже реально. І за 24 неділі вже можна стати тижня працювати, Дата аналітиком і війти, хай не на 120 тисяч гривень, а на першу таку роль помічником дата аналітиком. І то вже вас можна взяти для того, щоб увійти в професію. Які ж є бенефіти? Тобто є потенціали, є бенефіти і все ж все, що ж таке проявляється нам бенефіти що ж все-таки проявляється із потенціалів в наші бенефіти. Перший пункт ми з вами сказали, що 94% працевлаштовується другий, що в Сполучених Штатах Америки це професія, яка найбільше є найбільше зростання по кар'єрній сходинці. Це дуже цікаво. Тобто, заходячи в дата-аналітику, ви розумієте, що дуже швидко ви виростете в дата-сайентиста, в дата-менеджмент, в дата-інженіринг. Тобто, там дуже багато ще професій. Так, і розуміємо, що дата-аналітики заробляють двічі більше, ніж середні зарплати по Сполученим Штатам Америки. Далі, 90% дата-аналітики була сформована за останні два роки, це ми з вами говорили. Насправді, тут в Сполучених Штатах Америки нікому особливо твоє технічне дегрі не потрібне. Але якщо ви математики, якщо ви з мехмату, тобто для вас це вже такі як зелене світло. Але якщо ви з міжнародної економіки, навіть якщо ви працювали в менеджменті, тобто вас візьмуть просто для тих, у кого є математичний бэкграунд, деякі речі вам просто будуть значно простіше, ви можете швидше заходити в дата інженіринг, в дата менеджмент, в дата, ну і в дата менеджмент теж, бо дата менеджмент це саме високий рівень, коли ти пройшов інші аналітику, сайенс. Далі. І останній пункт, який ми хотіли проговорити з вами, що 
Зараз передвинемо трохи. Добре. Що Data Science насправді – це ще легше, чим ми можемо уявити. Да? Просто дійсно треба мати аналітичний склад ума і аналізувати. Що для вас має бути, яка особиста має бути ваша місія під час курсу, який от ви там проходите зараз в даний момент? Да? Тобто вам обов'язково вже треба розпочинати реалізовувати свою кар'єру в тих компаніях, де вже, де, де вже вас можуть взяти. Насправді, зараз Сполучені Штати Америки, якщо ви будете на LinkedIn і себе розміщите, і розміщите, що ви вже є дата-аналітик, то ви дуже швидко можете знайти дистанційно собі роботу. Да? От уже навчаючи, скажете, що у вас математичний бакграунд, що ви зараз проходите такий курс і а, вас будуть брати. Вам треба буде зараз концентруватися на сетах, тобто своїх компетенцій. Да? Ми з Володі теж пропрацьовували і починали звідки ми. Да? Тобто ми свою аналітику проводили, радилися з ним. І що виявляється насправді, що ті комплекс оцих компетенцій роботодавцями вже визначений. І коли Володя, я знаю, що він пропрацьовував цю програму, Володимир, і він чітко орієнтувався на запити роботодавців. Тому тут ви можете довіряти, довіритись йому. Що насправді американці зараз дивляться на фахівців, не тільки які будуть працювати в ІТ-сфері, да? тобто фармацевтична галузь, логістика, реклама. Мабуть, це саме більша, це, це та професія, яка покриває найбільше різних сфер і е, галузь, да, від авіаційної, від сильно складної до е, надзвичайно простої, але яка легко монетизується. Тобто ваша вибірка по професіям, дата аналітика, дата сайенс надзвичайно широка. Так, е, звісно, вам треба буде е, improve professional English languages, тому що без мови ніхто брати не буде, але що можна буде робити, це є ще ряд е, курсів на Курсері, на всьому Володя вам буде, Володимир буде вам розповідати, де можна взяти е, е, курс, і він вам теж, якщо ви будете формувати свій LinkedIn і своє портфоліо, ви там викладаєте, да, там, е, курс е, ви пройшли і за Амазоном. Курс ви пройшли з Курсерою, з Майкрософта. Це зараз все дуже доступне, але там ви зможете отримати оцю мову. Да? Дуже добре, що ви це починаєте робити в Україні, там, де у вас немає таких мовних перепон. Володимир вас буде поглиблювати, але самостійно вам треба зараз добирати професійну англійську мову. Вже зараз треба, щоб ви дивилися на, я вже вам це говорила, що не чекайте, поки ви закінчите свій власний, цей власний цей курс і отримаєте сертифікат по його закінченню. Намагайтеся знайти вже роботу помічника аналітика. А, і а, якщо у вас вже є якийсь досвід роботи, ви можете його дуже гарно комбінувати. І а, а, абсолютно, тобто вам треба зазначати будь-який досвід роботи, який у вас був, ви зазначайте, формуйте, тому що а, всі ваші знання допоможуть а, в дата сайенсі. Це дуже гарна а, дата аналітика професія, тому що ти дійсно можеш комбінувати свої а, кроскіли. Так, ну що, йдемо далі. Ось такі set of tools and skills, які запитуються в 
в різних, в тих чи інших програмах, але і роботодавці на них звертають увагу. Тобто для того, дійсно, щоб ви випустились, вам треба розуміти Python, R, SQL, працювати на цих всіх програмах. Ви можете це сфотографувати, тому що все це з Володимиром також було правильно погоджено і і те, в якому ви напрямку рухаєтеся. Да? Так ми зобразили е, оці комплекс знань, да, які повинен будуватися на абсолютно різних програмах. Тобто ви самостійно можете ще це все добирати на інших е, е, платформах. Зверніть теж увагу на Курсеру, це така от як одна з моїх порад. Да, це от такі знання, які по суті, вам ну, ви отримуєте по, і маєте отримати по закінченню, по закінченню різних програм, щоб ви вже стали фахівцями. От просто це все, що ми зараз вам показуємо, це дійсно ця підборка, можете фотографувати, була зроблена для того, щоб ви орієнтувалися, що зараз ну, на ринку Америки, які знання, які скіли, що затребувано. Е, ідемо далі. Так, ну і в принципі я бачу, що в нас по часу вже 8.28, через е, е, треба давати іншим спікерам да, час. Я вам дякую, це от контактна інформація. І ще раз на що я хочу звернути увагу да, для всіх вас, хто сьогодні є, що Facebook, Instagram для компаній не працює. Зараз обов'язково треба формувати власні профілі в LinkedIn. Коли я їжу в Силіконову долину на різні конференції чи на будь-які інші зустрічі, вже ніхто навіть не роздає візитівки. Всі роблять QR-код, використовують і свої дані в LinkedIn. Тому заповнюйте вже його, починайте з цього, і ви побачите, який вже на вас буде попит, запит, як на фахівців, особливо, якщо більшість із вас математичним бекграундом. Тобто я дуже рада, що 160 чоловік долучилися да, до такого курсу. До, е, це не то, що тренди, а ви зараз навіть не на гребні хвилі, да, а хвиля тільки починається, ви всі її зловите. От мені дуже радісно, що 160 чоловік Дуже швидко за там до 30 тижнів можуть стати дата-аналітиками, можуть опанувати війти професію. Тому рада всіх вітати з цим і дуже I'm excited, да, презентувати нових презентувати спікерів, які дійсно на силіконовій долині виступають перед великим аудиторією, створюють тренди. І доступ до тих спікерів, які ми сьогодні будуть, будуть брати участь, він, він закритий, да? тому що це не лише там спікери з університетів, але це ще а, драйвери Data Science, Digital Transformation а, з різних компаній абсолютно в різних сферах. Тому дякую, ще раз вітаю вас з участю в цьому курсі. First of all, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for this introduction, for this possibility, for this collaboration. Rector of the University of Artificial Intelligence and Digitalization, Professor Daria Kusharic. Thanks a lot. And well, I believe that it is time to present our next speaker, our guest from Silicon Valley. So please, Daria, will you introduce our next speaker? Yes. Yes. Дякуємо, yes. дякуємо дуже за цей виступ, за презентацію, за можливості, які відкриваєте, і по можливості, будь ласка, представте наших наступних спікерів. А я а, так. А... Я пропоную представити спікера там, де в нас ми боялися дійсно, що можуть бути бомбардування, і ми його записали. Він для нас, верніше, записав в онлайні по часу, щоб, щоб не пропустити. І так, це Міхаїл 
Фотон, насправді, він, із, він з університету Ohio State University, adjunct faculty, але, крім цього, він сам є драйвером digital transformation і data science, як він використовує в digital transformation. І от такий ролик, як мотиваційний, пояснювальний, він записав. Якщо Поліна його зараз включить, будемо дуже вдячні. А ми тим часом налагоджуємо підключення із нашими наступними спікерами, які виступлять на живу режимі реального часу, де вже буде можливість ваші питання озвучити, поспілкуватися, тож налагоджуємо наш телеміст із Кремнієвої долини. So I see that the presentation is done, we can share this video. And the participants, please welcome to join our live sessions with our next speakers. Welcome to my friends at the University of Ukraine and to this data analytics course. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you today. Thank you to Dr. Kucheritz uh, for giving me this chance. I am coming to you from sunny Columbus, Ohio. My name is Michael Fulton. Um, Dr. Kucheritz and I met at a conference not too long ago, uh, and we really hit it off uh, talking about discussing the conversation around digital transformation. Uh, digital transformation is an area that I'm very passionate about having a lot of experience on the topic uh, in uh, several of my different roles throughout my career. Uh, it also is a topic I teach quite regularly to both undergrads and executives uh, on here at The Ohio State University where I teach and I'm excited to talk to you a little bit about the intersection of data analytics and digital today. So when I talk to my students about digital, I really like to focus in on this definition. Uh, digital is all about leveraging technology and data to transform a company's business model and customers' experiences. Now this is an important shift that we've been going through for the last several years uh, in our industry. Historically, technology was largely used to transform a company's internal operating model. We brought in uh, ERP systems, we brought in financial systems, we changed how things worked inside our companies with things that we could control. We were making our organizations more productive leveraging technology. But in today's day and age, for us to continue to drive our organizations forward successfully, it becomes critically important for us to change how we think, to now begin to take technology and use it to transform how we work with the outside world, how we work with our customers, how we transform their experience, uh, and how we change our business models as organizations. And a big key to this shift is not just leveraging technology, but it's the incorporation of data into the conversation. Data is a critically important element of truly being successful when it comes to your digital transformation. Now, why is data so important to digital? I think that's an important thing for us to explore just a little bit more deeply. So first off, I would say that data is critical because as we start to move outside of our company, we need to have a better understanding of what our customers want and need. When we are working inside our companies, we have a little bit more control. We can tell employees how to work. We can have a better understanding of what's actually needed. But when we start to work with customers, customers are going to use our products, they're gonna use our services, in the way that best suits them, not in the way that best suits us. So understanding what our customers' wants and needs actually are, understanding how our customers use our products becomes critically important. And that's one of the things that um, properly driving a digital transformation can do for us. It can gain us access to uh, data that can provide insight into who our customer is and what he or she wants. So that's the first thing I think that is critically important. The second reason why data is so important to digital is 
it enables speed and accuracy of decision making. As organizations move forward, what we find is that when we are working with our customers and we're trying to learn as we go, because we don't know what our customers actually want, we have to take an experimentation mindset. We need to think more like R&D scientists than a, 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 a plant manager on the, on the shop floor, right? So if we're going to take this experimental iterative mindset, we have to collect data in and we have to be able to rapidly make decisions on what to do with that data rapidly make decisions on how to change what we're putting in front of our customers. And so that data gives us the ability to move much more quickly and with much higher levels of accuracy when it comes to making decisions on what our customers want and need. Critically important to our digital transformation. Finally, the third piece, uh, we talk a lot in digital transformation about the concepts of automation and artificial intelligence. And in both cases, what's the key um, fuel for automation? What's the key fuel for automation, for art artificial intelligence? It's data, right? Artificial intelligence requires huge amounts of data to be able to create the appropriate mathematical models to be able to um, drive the AI in the way that it needs to be driven. Um, in order for us to, to drive automation, we have to have levels of data input into our automation processes so we can tell the computer what to do. In both cases, data is absolutely at the core of these key elements of what's being built into digital transformations all around the world. So when I think about this data and analytics class that all of you are participating here this semester in, you are gaining uh, a leg up over your competition because data is going to be at the heart of business going forward. Now there's another thing that I like to talk about when I talk about why data is so important. And that's taking a, a step back and, and looking at the key technologies that are often attributed to digital. Now, Digital is not just about the technology, and, and hopefully you've already gotten a sense of that. It's about culture change. It's about understanding and leveraging the data. But if we look at some of the key technologies that are commonly associated with digital transformation, things like social, mobile, analytics in the cloud, or some of the newer technologies, more of the emerging technologies, uh, distributed ledgers, artificial intelligence, extended reality, and quantum computing, Almost all of these have data at the heart of them, right? Social media was all about helping people communicate and then figuring out ways to actually leverage the data that would come out of those communications between people in new and interesting ways. Mobile was about putting data in the hands of people wherever they were, whenever they wanted it. Analytics, you're in the heart of that, obviously, all about using data to predict future behaviors. And even the cloud um, is, is all about allowing us to more quickly respond to and access important data, right? If you think about the, the first cloud service that was ever created, it was Amazon S3. S3 uh, is simple storage, right? It was all about the data from the very start when we talk about cloud. And when we look at the, the newer technologies, right? Distributed ledgers, the democratization of data. Obviously artificial intelligence, we've already talked a little bit about, but data is at the core. Extended reality is about leveraging data to create a virtual world that people can interact with in new and different ways. And then quantum technology is the one that I would probably say uh, is least related to data. But even there, quantum computing is going to help us solve some of our most data intensive computational problems going forward. So it's going to unleash the power of data in unique and interesting ways. So when we think about 
the technology component of digital, it's still incredibly tied to data. In fact, the one technology that's often tied to a digital transformation that I didn't mention, Internet of Things, is all about the data. So if you haven't already gotten a sense of it, uh, hopefully you'll, you'll take home this idea that data is absolutely fundamentally at the core of your digital transformation. In fact, you may be familiar with this common model that's been used in the business world for decades. We talk about business capabilities being people, process, and technology. And if you're able to really successfully um, deliver improvements across all three of those, you can deliver success for your organization. I would argue uh, that over the last few years, this model has changed, right? It's no longer just people, process, and technology. Now it's people, process, data, and technology to truly be successful. I think you uh, are at the start of your journey on what has the opportunity to be a very successful career in data and analytics. And I wish you all the best on that journey. Thank you for giving me a few minutes to talk to you today. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kucheretz, for, for inviting me to speak to you. And from over here in the United States, I wish you all the best on your data analytics journey. Thank you. Um, well, um, our speaker is ready. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, so, so we are ready to move to our next slot. Yeah. One yeah. of the most interesting, I believe. And now it will be about the communication with live speakers, with famous speakers, with top experts from Silicon Valley. And well, it's the great pleasure to welcome our speakers. It's the great honor for us. And Thanks a lot for joining today. Thanks a lot for the support of our country in these hard times for our country. But I believe that with your support, with this knowledge, with this information which you will share with our students, it is about the victory. It is definitely about to be strong, to go ahead, to implement, to become professionals. And to nevertheless, which sphere we represent, definitely with our professional development, it is about great possibilities of the professional growth, development, implementation, and definitely the victory of Ukraine. Daria? Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> so uh, I would like to introduce Nayan Kibos. Uh, she is a solution, a solution architect at Snow, Snowflow Analytics. So this is, um, uh, but I want to um, uh, tell you um, a little story uh, how uh, how I knew Nayanki both how we communicate. So Nayanki she uh, she was a speaker in the one of the biggest conference in Silicon Valley, and um, uh, on her uh, lectures when she was a speaker, it was a lot a lot of. Uh, uh, people who was interested in what she's saying, what she's doing, what about is her presentation. And uh, our company uh, has the biggest, um, uh, the biggest, uh, in the exhibition, you have the biggest uh, information, yes, place, uh, and uh, uh, they were situated close to the uh, MBA, yes, uh, B BMA, so, and uh, it's, um, it was very interesting. So I asked her to share what um, all this information with, um, with you. And Nayanki, I would like to introduce you our student. So this is a student from uh, Tara Shevchenko National University. And this is the course for data analytics. So uh, we would like um, very much them to 
to join this uh, new job in demand, especially as it you are data driver, as it you are architect, very strong architect, and you have this passion to share um, to, to to share with other people what is data science, how it was very important, and which is big impact is of using this data science. And a lot of companies right now doing big money just um, of using data scientists. And in the United States, all companies now want to have a data scientist, but it's very expensive to, to find them, to grow them. Am I right? <laughs> so even there is a lot of HR manager who, who just doing the job is to find data, data scientists. <laughs> so a big company is working to find a good, uh, strong uh, data scientist, data manager, data engineer. So, so happy that uh, Nayanki boss is today with us and uh, that she's sharing with us uh, this is um, pre her presentation and I'm sure sure you will have a lot of insight um, and uh, you will enjoy thank you very much thank yeah, you so thank much for you joining much. and the yeah. stage is yours please welcome yeah thank you so much for for having me uh, it's great to be here and to, to redo this talk uh, again um, yeah, let me share my screen and then I'll just go over what we have. Um, if you do have any questions, feel absolutely free to, to, to ask them. Um, and I hope it all makes sense. Uh, there we go. Perfect. Um, so yeah, what my talk was about is uh, data creation for AI and ML. And those are definitely things you've, you've heard about. Um, a lot of people think about like artificial intelligence and, and machine learning as these, these uh, amazing things what it's definitely in your your future um most bigger companies run any sort of, of ai and, and ML models to, to to gain advantage um but obviously you need data to actually run those models and you need to create that in in a very specific way um and that's what we do what we do with stuff so i'd like to talk you to what we do why we do it and what the opportunities are that you have here um first a little bit about myself so I just need to, I'm a solution architect at, at Snowplow, um, which means that for the most part, um, I take new customers and uh, I onboard them on our platform. So I uh, discuss uh, designing their, their tracking with them. Like, wait, how are you going to actually instrument the tracking? How are you going to design your, your tracking? Uh, and how are you going to design the data that you need for your analytics, for your, for your models, for your machine learning models? Uh, Etc. I've been doing that for, for about three years now um, at Snowplow. Before that, um, I worked in e-commerce, uh, both as a consultant and an, an analyst as well. Um, and um, in, in all my jobs, especially those related to data, I've always been in favor of, of just educating people and, and empowering people. Because um, even the, the smallest companies these days, they, they have data um, and they, they need to have data. Um, you can't just start a company anymore, especially online, and be like, okay, let's let's sell things. Now you need to know who your audience is. Where are the people coming from? Is your marketing actually working? Um, and it's been a great privilege to actually work with some of those those smaller companies uh, to get people that that data to empower people to to do things with uh, what's already happening on their platforms. Um, obviously, I've worked with, with bigger companies as well. Uh, who have entire teams built around these kind of things. They'll have that teams of, of data scientists, teams of machine learning engineers, um, who, who both have their 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 jobs to to empower us and go go on to this. So, um, I'll uh, I'll give some examples a little later as well. So a little bit about Snowplow. Um, so Snowplow is a, a behavioral data platform, um, which means that. Any sort of action you do on either web or on your mobile or on, on uh, iOS devices, anything there, we can capture that, that data. So whether you're viewing something, you're, you're clicking on things, you're interacting with various features, that is all behavioral data. So the behavior of, of customers, of users, um, and that, that behavior has to be analyzed and you can, you can do some really cool things with that. 
Um, so we take that, we set up pipelines for, for people data five times to take that from their applications all the way to their data warehouse uh, where they can model it and, and work with that. Um, our technology is open source as well. Um, in the end, I'll, I'll have a, a quick quick start guide too. So if you want to play around with these things, feel absolutely free free to do so. Um, but we also have a commercial platform um, for those teams who either don't have the capabilities yet um, or just don't want to deal with uh, maintaining pipelines and such. Um, so that is an option too. Um, so yeah, just uh, a few things of what we currently see in our uh, in, in the customers who work with and in the data space in general. Um, so companies and hopefully the companies you'll be, be working for are investing more and more in data apps. Um, so in applications, in, in programs that are driven by data to perform a service or to enhance the service they already perform. Um, and that's been, as we, we've seen, absolutely critical to unlock competitive advantage. Um, you cannot become a big player in the current market without actually using the data um, in a proper way and actioning that and doing something with that. Um, two examples here, uh, Strava is an app you might know, it's a, an exercise tracking app. Um, and they actually use Snowplow. They gener generate about 4 billion events per day. Um, and they use that data coming from all their applications. So the app you have on your phone to track your, your workouts, but also the behavior on their, their various websites and marketing platforms. Um, they use all that data to power their applications. Um, so they can like personalize if you've done three kinds of exercises, they might be able to be like, hey, maybe you should try this. Um, or they can encourage you if you always do your run at 7 a.m. in the morning and you skip one, they'll be like, hey, where were you? Um, so those kind of predictive models to get your customers engaged and to provide these services. Um, but they also power their marketing teams because they know what their marketing spend is, where, uh, where their, their customers are coming from and what actually transforms into uh, to a paying customer or an active customer. Um, so they have all their, all their teams working in some way, shape or form with, uh, with Snowplow data. Um, and that's great news for, for you guys as well. So you don't have to narrow yourself into one little, little corner. There's so many opportunities you have with data. Um, that can be marketing data. There's millions of marketing analysts. That can be machine learning. It can be AI. There's a whole whole range of opportunities here that you can you can use. Um, a different uh, example is DPG, which is a media group. Um, and if you've you've worked in in media before, um, you might know that it's a super fast landscape at the moment. Um, and we get our news, um, just like you guys, we get our news from Twitter nowadays or from, uh, from any sort of social media platform. So for these, these media companies to actually be successful in this landscape, they need to be fast. Um, if you're not the first one with a news item, then you're losing a whole bunch of traffic um, and your traffic, um, the traffic that isn't there, um, doesn't see your ads. So you don't get any, any, any sort of money in because most of these companies get there. Uh, money in either through subscriptions or, or advertisements. Um, and DPG uses uh, Snowplow data to, to capture behavioral data of people in real time. Um, and that empowers them to make personalizations and uh, recommendations. So you might always go to the website in the morning and click uh, to their, their education uh, tutorials. And you just go through whatever they, they have there um, at certain points. Um, the system will recognize you and will start uh, recommending various things, things you might not have seen yet, or things that are super new, or maybe uh, opinion pieces that have been brought out a little bit longer ago, but are super um, informative to you, but the things you, you've captured from now. Um, so those are some of the super cool things that you can do um, with data and that we see, like I said, companies do, do more and more nowadays. Um, but with that comes uh, a caveat, and Peter Norvig is someone who you probably uh, hear a whole a whole lot more about in the next uh, next couple months. Um, he's a, a rather famous data scientist, and one of his quotes is, um, "More data beats clever algorithms, but better data beats more data." Um, and what he means by that is something you you see here. There is a whole range of tooling available. Uh, currently for all sorts of different um, data applications. So you have your, your package analytics tooling. So that is a tool you put on your website and it will grab those events for you to see what your customers are doing. 
Um, but there's other tools out there for mobile analytics. So that's a different tool you can put in your, in your mobile apps to get your data. Um, then you have your uh, customer data platforms, which is then another tool uh, where you get your data from. Um, and that can lead to something that's called data exhaust. Uh, all these specific tools, they, they're great in their own way, but they're also built for a specific thing, a specific function, um, whether it's web analytics or mobile analytics or, or whatever you bought it for. Um, but they're not created to uh, make machine learning models or do something that companies are specifically made for. Um, so as an analyst, you'll have to work with whatever data they provide you um, and then go from there and, and design your models. Um, so like you, you see here, um, all of these different tools give you different usernames in different ways. If people log in in different ways, um, you might get different values here. They might provide some values. They might not provide some value, other values. Um, I imagine that in a couple months, you'll do a whole bunch of cleaning of data sets, um, which is a, a very, very much a poor skill. Um, but it's also something that is, is fairly dreadful after a while to having to do this, these steps repeated over and over again. Um, and it all has to be done by the data teams in these various companies. And though most data teams will spend actually quite a lot of time cleaning up data incoming from these sort of applications um, before they can move on with their analytics or their AI, AI and ML. Um, and you can see that that becomes a bottleneck because everything coming in has to be cleaned by the data team uh, before something can, can happen there. Um, and they also have to work with what these tools give them. So some of these tools might be sort of a, a black box, like you get your data, but exactly where it comes from, how it's tracked. Um, you don't know if you only have something in your, in your mobile apps, then it's siloed there and you cannot go across other platforms. Um, so it all makes this uh, a whole lot harder to, to actually work with. Um, and like I said, this data isn't designed for, for AI or other intensive purposes. It is designed to do whatever that specific tool is for, but it's not designed to look holistically at what's, what's going on. Um, therefore, if you start combining all these things, it becomes difficult to understand. So you get various information from, from, from various platforms and various tools, um, and also not conductive, conductive for building features from that, because again, there's all sorts of different things you have to clean up first before you can, can do, it, do with that. Um, it's structured in different ways. Um, and when it comes, especially in, in Europe, but in California as well, um, to actually complying with all sorts of different uh, privacy laws and things, it becomes very, very tricky real fast um, because that data is moved anywhere. Uh, and you might not have full control over what's, what's going on. Um, so that's where you, you'll then spend a lot of time trying to figure out how you can use these data sets um, and, and making sure everything is, is compliant. Um, like I said, you'll, you'll be spending the, the next couple of months, I imagine, a lot staring at data sets like this, um, where there's a whole lot going on uh, before you can actually use it. Um, things might be called different, so you first have to clean this. Um, you'll have things here returning, true or false. I don't know what it means, where it comes from, what, what we're doing here. Um, different timestamps from, from different sources. Um, it all get, gets really, really hard to uh, actually work with. Um, so there's another way to do it. Um, so this is the, the way I just described, where you have your various platforms, and then your AI team or, or data team will spend a lot of time in various different steps to take these data sets, clean them up, um, transform them in such a way that they become usable, uh, and then they can spend whatever time they left over to actually do cool stuff with this data to create their uh, AI models, ML models, um, to actually do some advanced analytics on it. Um, whereas in a different option, you create your own data um, instead of using these other tools, you create your data in a way that you already needed. So you know what your data set has to look like um, if you start a specific project, you know which properties you need, you know the format of the data you need. Um, so if you can instead um, then in your applications create that data, um, then you don't have to spend all this time cleaning, transforming, et cetera. No, you, you gather your data, you set it up, um, and then you start engineering your the features you need. Um, and if you do that, 
it makes your life a whole lot easier um, because the data you create is intelligible. So it describes the unique situation of your business. Um, because any of these other tools you you will use, um, they they are great for one purpose, but that purpose has to be shared across many businesses. Whereas whatever business case you're working on is is usually unique. It has, usually has features that nobody else has. Um, therefore, it also needs to be be flexible. Your product is going to change over time. Um, you're going to make updates. Your your teams are going to grow. Your units are going to grow. Um, so your data needs to grow with that as well. Um, compliancy, I mentioned a little bit already. Um, if you create your own data, you know where your data goes. So if your data has to stay um, within Europe, for example, um, you can do that um, in your own data pipelines. No, no problem. Um, also for, for real-time consumption, um, if you want to consume any sort of data real-time and you want to action on it, um, it needs to be clean uh, data structured in a specific way that you can easily action on it. In real-time, you do not have time to clean anything up because you need to act within microseconds to actually do something like that. So again, that is what you what you create your data for. Um, so that is what we do at SOFA. So we generate the data in um, various different ways. We got uh, a lot of trackers. Um, our JavaScript tracker is one of the, the most popular ones, um, but we got them for, for Internet of Things devices, for mobile devices, um, et cetera. Um, and you put those in your own applications. Um, and then in your data warehouse, um, we validate that data against schemas that you write yourself. So for every event coming through, you will set up a schema, define, okay, this is the property I need. I need this property to be a string. I need it to be so many characters. Um, if not, we'll kick it out to a, a bad events queue where you can leave it for QA and such. Um, but the rest of that data structured in a specific way um, will land in your data warehouse or your data lake um, for uh, either real-time real -time processing or event forwarding to, to marketing tools or whatever, um, or most importantly, to, to train models for, for AI, for ML, uh, and to actually do something with it without having to do a whole lot of, of steps in between. There we go. Um, so you've heard me talk about behavioral data um, a little bit. Let me give you a, a little bit of context of what behavioral data actually actually is. Um, so you have various types of data. Um, and behavioral data is the last layer on top of that. Um, so you have your, your systems data, whatever you get from your server or your applications. Um, it is uh, very straightforward. Um, there's not a whole lot you can, uh, you can go wrong there. Then you have your transactional data. So anything that has to do with a transaction. Um, so purchase data, visa data, things like that. Um, then you have your demographic data. Um, so that is who is actually doing these actions. Uh, and that's something you get from your marketing IDs or for your, from your customer uh, data platforms, um, your demographic data. Um, and then on top of that, you have a layer of behavioral data that connects all of that together. Um, and it answers the question of why is someone doing these, these actions? Um, and let me give you an example of what that would look like. Um, so it is behavior. It is what people do on a specific, uh, in a specific action, um, and they may, they do many actions, and many of your users will take these these actions. But it's all based on almost on on natural language because we as humans, we we don't behave like computers. Um, no, we search something on a specific day um, with a specific action in mind. Oh, that was too fast. No, go back. There we go. Um, like I said, it, it follows a specific language, what people do. Um, almost a, a universal data language. And it's something that you will create within uh, your own companies as well. Um, so in this case, we have a subject, a verb, a main object, and the complement. So Joanne clicks on a call to action button on a specific screen. Um, and you can imagine that this happens all over your various applications. Um, and if you capture it in, in this way, you have your, your reliable, accurate data that you can action off of, if you can do things off. Because if you combine all of these actions uh, together, you get a picture of why people are doing things on your, uh, uh, on your, in, in your various applications. Um, and what are people actually doing with these things? Um, so you have created your 
your data set. You have created your, your rules. You have implemented these in the various applications you use. What do you do with it? Um, well, it, especially in, in, in current times, um, there's a couple of things we see people do. Uh, first is your, your first party digital analytics. So if you've, if you've read anything about uh, the data space in the past couple of years, you know that um, cookies and privacy is a subject that comes up more and more and more. Um, so bar, how you are allowed to gather data, what you are allowed to do with it, um, it, it has to abide by a lot more rules nowadays. And uh, for the most part, that is definitely a, a good thing. Um, privacy on the web is, is, is massive. Um, but you still want to, as a company, gather data on your, on your customers. And you want to improve the services that you are providing or improve the product that you, that you have, um, which is why you need your, your first party digital analytics. So if you write your own rules for your data, if you design your own data, um, then you can design it in such a way that it abides by all the laws. And because you have designed it yourself, um, you also know why you're capturing things, where the data is coming from, where it's going to, and you control all of that. Um, and then you can use that as a bit as a basis to uh, join other data sources too as well. Um, so that's one big thing we see. Um, the other one is the, the composable CDP, so a, a customer data platform, um, tied a little bit to the to the first party analytics as well. Um, but you're creating a, a single source of truth for uh, for your customers. Um, like a, the table I just saw, um, once you start recognizing your customer, especially if you can uh, link between uh, uh, signed in customers and, and non signed in customers, you can start building a complete table of um, what people are doing, uh, what marketing tools did they use to, or what marketing campaigns, um, drew them to your, to your site, uh, what specific actions did they take to finally convert to, to become a paying customer or, or an active customer. Um, and if you write these, these data schemas over and over again, you get a complete picture of who this customer is, what they're doing, um, and how you can best best serve them. Again, written in such a way that you stay within any sort of, of local compliance. Um, and this is a very powerful tool for your, for your machine learning. Like I said, um, if you start to learn what people do, uh, and you can start making predictions of that if you see people do similar things, um, either before they sign up or maybe before they before they turn, before you're, you, they leave your service. Um, and those are things you can then action on. Um, and just to give you an idea of what that would look like in a, uh, in a, in a complete pipeline. Um, so you have your applications in your various, uh, in your various tools. So it can be web or mobile or, or server side, et cetera. Um, you download it through your data pipeline uh, where you can enrich the data so you can add extra fields to it um, and model the data um, so you get usable chunks of data to work with. Um, usually you don't want to uh, work with all the massive data sets that you, you're coming in. Um, like I said in the beginning, Strava does, does fill 4 billion events a day. Um, you might want to narrow it down for, uh, for some of your applications. Um, this all loads into your data warehouse. There's various ones out there. Um, but no matter where you go, you then model that data, um, again, making your, uh, making your data more useful. And from there, it streams into any sort of digital analytics application. So you want to visualize the data to, to create reports, um, or you want to action off of it somehow, um, or just give, give other users insight in, in what's going on. Um, and you can have a similar, a similar setup for a, a composable uh, a customer data platform. So the basic setup is the same. You have your, your applications, uh, or you have your data in your various applications. You uh, file that into your data warehouse, um, but then you combine it with other party sources as well. So your advertising data, um, so where have you spent your ads? It could be Facebook data, it could be um, any sort of advertising platform that gives you that information. Um, that creates its own stable tables, and you combine that. So you combine the behavioral data, which actions did these users take um, with the, the third party the sources there. Uh, and then you create your, your golden record because you then have a complete overview of who's doing what and why. Um, and you can use that one to, to reverse ETL it um, into various other applications. Um, again, your, your, uh, your ad providers or your, your machine learning models to actually engage these customers um, and to target customers similar, similar to them. 
Um, yeah, we've been doing this for a long, long time. Uh, and like I said, we're, we're available open source as well. Um, it's on GitHub, so you can you can just check it out. And there, there's a whole bunch of customers that are, a whole bunch of users that are uh, that are using our, our software. So being being familiar with Snowplow um, should help you in your in your futures as well. Um, even if you just use it just to play around, see what you can do on your on your own applications. Um, it it is fun to play around with. Um, is over here and now I will share this uh, afterwards as well. There is an, an open source quick start guide. So if you're, you know, a couple months in, you feel uh, pretty comfortable about what you're doing, um, go to GitHub, try it up, try to see if you can spin up these pipelines, try to see if you can uh, capture the data from, from your own websites or, or, or personal projects that you have, um, and then try to model it. Um, we have some, some product accelerators as well. It has easy steps on step one, this is how you implement a tracker, this is how you, uh, Enrich the data. This is how you you model the data, um, and yeah, if you if you get stuck in any way, we have an open source community as well. Uh, those are absolutely happy to to help you out, um, and I'm happy to to help you out as well. Um, yeah, hit me up on, on LinkedIn or whatever. I'm absolutely happy to talk data all the time. Or if you have any questions about uh, the, the the data uh, world on it as a whole, um, or or just any, any data questions in general. Uh, yeah, feel free to, to reach out. Uh, if there, there's any questions, I would I could also answer them right now. Thank you very much, Mayanki. <laughs> uh, uh, Vladimir, can you please moderate questions? Hello? <laughs> yeah, Paulina, maybe. Uh, yes, you can moderate all questions. Uh, okay, so dear participants, okay. please put your questions on the chat. Uh, thanks to our speaker for this incredible uh, lecture. It was so interesting and thank you uh, for this opportunity for our students. Uh, it's really important today for us. Uh, thank you. So we will wait for a few minutes for questions. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of time because like we have another speaker so <laughs> just just let you know yeah yeah because i know it's a it's a lot to, to take in um yeah but hit me up yeah. on linkedin or, or whatever if you have any questions afterwards uh, happy to to help out uh, yeah thank um, yeah thank you but let, let's have a few um, a few questions and then we're gonna uh so have, Arthur, yeah. maybe you can uh turn on your uh camera or uh voice by voice uh please arthur yes thank you um so i have a question thank you nanki so my question was uh, please recommend one uh or several books uh, to start with um, statistical learning because uh, i found uh, one book uh, from one recommendation which is called an introduction to statistical learning it's like um quite hard to understand thank you uh, man, that's a good question uh it's been a long long time since i've read any sort of statistical books uh <laughs> but yeah it's a it's a great uh it's a great um a great area to start in especially if you want to get into to, to machine learning and, and things like that um the one I use that is, uh, that I, I reference every once in a while, um, still it's called Statistics 101. Uh, and the author, uh, it's David Borman. Um, it's it, it's a little bit of an easier book to, to understand. Like I said, it's a Statistics 101, um, which gives you a, a little bit of an overview of everything. And I think it's a good starter book to, to, to get started on things. It's, it's not the most, it's not necessarily a deep dive, um, but yeah, if you want to, if you want to get familiar with more and more statistical uh, ideas, then that is a, a great place to start. Thank you. So we have another question. Yes. Wait, I'm sorry, I'm muted. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you for the answer. Uh, yes, we have another question. Maria, please uh, turn on your uh, microphone camera. Uh, unfortunately, I can't turn on my camera because I have no light. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. But I want, I wanted to ask you a question. So, um, it is uh, what problems or like peculiarities of this particular job may arise at the start of our career? Maybe you can tell something to be aware of or to be prepared for, actually. Um. Yeah, so the data space is is super wide. There's a million things you can you can do there. Um, so the the things to to be aware of is that for a lot of people this is new. So don't don't be discouraged if you know you're applying somewhere, you get a job somewhere, and you you just don't know what's what's going on. Uh, a lot of people, like even within within Snowplow, uh, don't come from any sort of, of computer science background or whatever people just pick things up uh here and there um so especially in the beginning of your career and definitely later on as well just ask as many questions as possible um it's it's a lot better to to just keep asking and asking than to be to be quiet and feel bad because you, you don't know what's going on um a lot of us in this sphere we went through it we know what it's like um so yeah feel feel absolutely free to to ask any questions and to do your own your own research as well. Um, there's a million different data communities out there um, with all sorts of tutorials and all, all sorts of, of um, helpful guides to get you to get you started. So yes, your beginning will be will be difficult. Um, no no question about that. But it is a very helpful community as well. Um, so ask your questions, uh, reach out to people, and make your connections there. Thank you very much. Hope my future employees won't be annoyed with my questions. Thank you. They won't. A good employer will not be. They, everybody, everybody I work with at least uh, will will respect that. Uh, will respect that you ask, and it shows that you're willing to learn. So thank you. And the last one question, Igor, please. Yeah, thank you. It was actually very interesting and very entertaining. I was. Uh, very interested. How did you personally learn all this stuff? How did you get like uh, decided to th work in data science and stuff like that? And what kind of like learning uh, sources would you personally recommend for other people, like online books and stuff like that? Yeah, definitely. Um, mine has been less traditional. Um, I majored in biology in university, and my uh, master was in in neurobiology. Um, but I graduated right smack in the middle of the economic depression so there was no jobs in biology <laughs> at that point um so yeah i made a side step into um i first did inside sales for uh, for an it company um and then moved into into e-commerce and there i just picked up things that that needed to be doing and i discovered that i, I did like the data space so whenever there was a, a project or something where that was sort of related to that. I just jumped on it um, and started learning internally. I did some internal um, uh, internal courses as well on, on data analysis. I, I learned most of my data analysis on the job. Um, started that with SQL and, and later Python as well. Um, and then moved on from there to, to actually to, to Snowplow as a, as a data company. Um, but that's all been based on, on what I did within my previous company, um, as well as online resources, there are um, there are there are some some good paid platforms that you can use. But if you have any sort of, especially in the beginning of your career, there's a, a million uh, a cheaper or, or or even free resources there. Um, I did a a, a lot of, of Python, like automate the boring tasks with Python. Python is a great great book, and it's available for free usually on on Udemy as well. Um, so in the beginning, especially if you're not completely sure what you want or how you want to, how you want to go about things, go for these free resources. Um, once you're actually sure about like, okay, I, I really like Python. I think I'm getting good at this. Um, then you might want to, uh, want to look into to more paid options. Um, if that's something you have available for, to you. Um, or, you know, once you start applying for jobs, um, make sure that it is a company that actually does education as well for its employees. Um, most modern companies will, will absolutely do that. Uh, most modern companies like, have employees like myself who do not have a traditional data background, um, but have learned through the job um, there. So those would, yeah, those would be my, my tips there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Daria, please. So uh, I have more question about Snowflow. So uh, on this um, 
uh, with Snowplow. I also started to write program for Snowplow, like, or how it's like from biology, you become a data scientist and architect actually, yeah? So uh, how long it take to you to become an, arch uh, an architect, yes? <laughs> Um, so I've yeah. been Did at you Snowplow write for about, yeah, huh? yeah, no, I, um, so most of the Snowplow related things I, I learned on the job. So, uh, before I, I got to Snowplow, um, I was familiar with both SQL and Python, um, as well as a consultant, um, for, uh, uh I taught people how to use, how to use their, their data, um, in e-commerce atmosphere for that. Um, so that is the, the combination of things that got me into Snowplow, like I worked uh, with customers and I help them uh, discover their, their data and to set these things up. Um, before that, I probably worked, I'd say about two years in, in analytics. I guess I, I started from uh, when, I, when I had the opportunity to, to jump on a data analytics project there. Um, I did an online course just to get to the basics. That was like two, two months, I imagine. Uh, and then from there, I was lucky enough to, to be allowed to be to work on the project and to work with other uh, analysts and scientists there and they they train me for the uh for the next about year and a half there um so yeah it's been a lot of on the job training i imagine it's a lot more efficient to actually get a course and do do things uh, full time uh but yeah so there, there's many non-traditional ways to, to do it it just takes time and uh yeah i'm afraid to say a little bit of luck too uh, thank you Thank you so much. Uh, do we still have questions? Because we have another speakers. Yeah, already. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. It was, it was amazing. Yeah. Because I reach out if any questions come up. Uh, Nanki, Nanki was so so thank you because we wasn't sure if we will finish our event today because of the bombing, no lights, no electricity, but we're so happy to motivate all this uh, uh, students, a new generation, which is ready, uh, almost ready for work, yes. <laughs> so thank you very much, very appreciate, especially for your time and especially the data scientist is very busy. <laughs> so thank you, thank you very much. Okay, I am. Um, I'm not sure if Vladimir is right now with us. Just to introduce another speakers. Okay, Vladimir, I think he he has a problem. So let me introduce Yudit Gami. Uh, just a second. So. Uh, you did hits global uh, product strategy and operation for a large social media company in Silicon Valley. For more than a decade, you did has a lead, uh, lead global teams to drive operational um, efficiencies and digital transformation, improving business agility. Alan Gist, his master's from University of Michigan. You did has gained expertise in several business domains, including fintech, management, management consulting, retail, and tech. He loves sharing his passion, motivating diverse teams, understanding technical trade-offs and delivering enterprise and, deli and delivering enterprise-wide solutions to meet business needs. So I am very proud that uh, you did this with us. Thank you so much. Uh, yes. Can you guys hear me? Yes. All right. Hello, everybody. I know it's been a long, long day for you guys. Uh, and uh, uh, and I really appreciate so many people turning in uh, for, for my talk and for every other talk that you've been. Um, it just goes ahead to see and um, kind of demonstrate solidarity and like the impact that we want to create by bringing all of us together uh, and, and learning, right? Uh, every one of us is learning, so I'm kind of excited to be here and share what I know with the intent to help you as you prepare for your own journey through this course, right? Um, you know, you've heard a lot of people talk about uh, the importance, the technical aspects of data. What I come here 
uh, to present, uh, to kind of share my thoughts on is an application of the work that you would do by learning in this course, right? Once you've, it, it is it is oftentimes, and, and I think you just uh, heard uh, from the speaker earlier um, during one of the questions is that it's a constantly evolving field. And by the time you start applying the lessons you've learned, things have moved fast. Uh, and that's exactly what's happened since last year. Uh, and, and again, there's war, there's, but beyond that, there was also a pandemic. And beyond that, there was also like what's happening right now is also microeconomic, uh, you know, uh, uh, situation in the market and across the world. And that's caused a lot of businesses to pivot. It's caused, you know, shops and industries and consumer behaviors to completely change. And, and for a moment, just take a look at how your own buying and shopping experiences change. I don't even remember last time I went to a shop and bought something. I probably just go to an online website uh, and just kind of buy stuff from there. So why am I saying this? Because what I'm going to talk today is the application of data to drive what we call as digital transformation. Now, digital transformation in past few years has become a buzzword. Some very I'm kind of hoping that by the time you guys also kind of go out and find your own jobs, the word digital transformation is going to be around. And hence, I want you guys to understand what digital transformation is and how this course will help you build that solid foundation so that you could actually make real world impact. You could actually make money. You could actually make a career. You could actually progress using these foundational elements that you'll be learning through the course. Right. So what is digital transformation? Right. People throw the word and term around a lot. And, and, and the reason why is because there's no standard definition for it, but it means different things for different people and different companies. So I'm, I, I cannot generalize it for the company that you might join in future, but I can explain you say for an example, a retail store, uh, you know, let's say Macy's, which is a very popular retail store here, it could be changing their business model by adding an e-commerce capability uh, instead of, you know, just the normal uh, retail store that they have. Now they have a website that's digitally transforming, right? From a company that already has a digital presence, say Amazon, it could mean changing their uh, processes or adopting digital technologies so that they can analyze the customer behavior and attributes to hyper personalize its product offering and provide better customer experience. So it, it could mean different things and regardless of how you define it for digital transformation to be successful, one thing that is foundational to this experience is data and analytics. So the question then becomes is why data and analytics are thread that carries this digital transformation, right? It's very important to understand and as and you know, as technologies and customer experiences you know, continue to evolve, businesses need to keep up pace, right? A company's ability uh, to compete and thrive will be determined by how quickly it can make informed data-driven decisions. And that is why the data actually feeds the narrative, feeds the experience that they want to drive. So I'm going to talk about like four things. Um, and these four things will help you understand why data is going to be key. So as you start thinking and learning more about data and analytics, I would also think about how you're going to practically apply these lessons into real world life, right? Um, so just to kind of begin with, uh, I said, like there are the, you know, where data provides, you know, it's already also kind of important to understand data and uh, analytics. So, you know, when data provides the information, it is the analytics on that data that provides insights. When I say insights, what I mean is the actual story or the narrative that builds out of the data, right? Uh, and that insights will lead to an informed decision-making. So using data analytics as a thread that carries your digital transformation before starting uh, through uh, uh, you know, any process is going to be key to how you improve your business. So there are these 
you know, there are four modern problems, if I could say so, uh, which data can solve, right? Uh, the first thing when you're driving transformation, and again, this is something that I've learned through my experience dealing and leading and managing a team uh, who can actually improve digital transformations. Uh, I used Macy's as an example earlier because I was a digital transformation consultant when I came in with Macy's. I led a team when I was doing for Tiffany and Co. Tiffany and Co. is also a very popular luxury retail brand. Um, I also did some, some something similar for a, another popular CRM firm, uh, and hence I've realized all these wires in these different industries, whether it's retail, whether it's luxury retail, or whether it's an e-commerce um, industry, things have constantly changed and involved leveraging data. So some of the problems, some of the business problems that you will solve, right, by leveraging this data is first, uh, and, as, uh, and as I said, I'll set four, but there could be several. So the a good homework for you, you know, as you just kind of step down and as you think about what you've learned today would be to figure out how you can practically apply these learnings. But anyways, coming back to these four questions, uh, the four problems, right? Uh, the first thing that that you can solve is the aspect of data silos, right? Uh, when data is siloed and segmented across different business units, tools, and platforms, it can definitely add to difficulty uh, and can make um, life more difficult for organizations to integrate this data and gain insights from it. To give you an example uh, from my previous experience, um, you know, when I was in Macy's and I, when I was kind of, you know, working with them, um, we had data that was coming from IBM uh, data storage. We had data that was coming from their internal data storage, and there was no aggregation of data at any place. What my team did was we brought data together. We made sure that the data becomes much more cohesive and we break the silos so that the insights and the storytelling from that data could be clearly identified, right? So using data analytics as a primary driver for your digital transformation allows you to consider technologies and strategies that will enable combining data from these different sources, sources that I mentioned and systems uh, so that you could actually see the bigger picture, right? So that is one clear problem that you will be able to solve. So the courses that the lessons, the, you know, the, the you know, whatever that you learn through this course is going to help you understand how do you aggregate data? How do you bring data together? And how do you, you know, share a compelling narrative or a story? The second problem that you can solve, right? A practical problem is the issue of data quality, right? Uh, you know, high quality data is extremely important for businesses to meet its objectives, right? But if steps aren't taken to ensure quality of data, then it can lead to costly, mis you know, costly mistakes and missed opportunities. Uh, you know, like valuing data as an asset across the organizations allows you to consider data management, data security, and data ownership, all of which, all of which uh, will lead to transparency and trust in the data and better decision making. In fact, a lot of companies today even sell data as a business. And when you are and when your only product is not a consumer facing product like, you know, WhatsApp or Instagram or something that you can use in play, and it's actually data, it becomes even more important for you to ensure data quality. So how do you do that is something that I, I'm, I'm hoping that you explore, learn through this course, but this is a very practical app application of your course that will help you drive your career forward, right? It is a problem that we have in the industry, and that's why I did want to surface this problem because this course will help you deal with it. Right? The, the, this third problem that we would want to solve is through the complexities in legal complex, complexities uh, with legal or legacy, not legal, my bad, uh, legacy system applications. So what is legacy systems, right? Um, so this was when I was uh, working with American Express. Uh, American Express is a big um, credit card company in the United States. They also have a bank. Um, but that bank is a virtual bank, right? Like it doesn't have like a bank with a physical store. Um, it's virtually located. Uh, and when, and you know, when you're working with these financial institutions, you will realize that uh, a lot of their systems, a lot of their 
processes or or the data application systems are very very old they use mainframe they use older technology and hence bringing and integrating these legacy system applications is often very very costly it is also very costly to maintain and update and in some cases it's impossible to integrate with more modern elements of your infrastructure it could be through javascripts or it could be through anything on on the front end right uh, and because of this problems with integration it also causes security concerns uh, they hinder your ability to come you kind of compete in the digital economy right because the process and the data data retrieval is also very slow looking at looking at this through the lens of data and analytics will allow you to select fit for a uh, purpose system and that would enable uh, agility and user adoption, better security and more optimized performance, right? So again, as you get out of this uh, to, you know, finding your own jobs and like figuring out how the application of data analytics would be in the real world, this is exactly the problem that you will solve. You'll come in, we'll understand, oh, this is an older system. This is a new system. How do I make both of them marry? Uh, how do I improve optimization of the performance? Uh, is a practical problem that you will solve, right? And, and, and the fourth and the most important of this whole problem that you'll solve is improving customer experience, right? Everybody, especially after pandemic, uh, the whole economy, the whole consumer behavior psychology, as we call, has changed, right? Nobody wants generic statement. Everybody wants personalization, right? Everybody wants to know or everybody wants to get what they think they want, right? So if I had to summarize, right, like consumers today expect seamless end-to-end -end experience and company rely only on data to provide it. If we do not have data, say for an example, if Udit wants a bread today uh, and I want a whole wheat bread today and I want a whole wheat bread of an X brand today, I want to see an ad or an advertisement which shows exactly that. If I'm seeing an advertisement of a jam, or maybe that's even tangential, but if I'm seeing an advertisement of a soccer ball instead of a bread, then my experience on the platform is not going to be good. So imagine you're scrolling through WhatsApp or scrolling through Instagram or doing reels, and, and all of a sudden you see an ad of a bread which you really want, which you might have seen over a period of time, but that's exactly what you want. And that is analyzing customer behavior and meeting those expectations. And all of that magic is happening through data, right? So data helps you understand not only who your customers are, what their needs are, what they're purchasing, when and how often, as well as how they prefer to be engaged. Some of you might, like there could be people who are old school and would like an email, there will be people who would want to see their on their social media apps. Some of them might want a notification about it, right? So it all depends on how the customer expectations are managed and data plays a foundational role in it, right? A digital transformation that focuses on data and analytics can enable technology and processes that will help gather and analyze the data so that you can meet customer expectations when they evolve, right? Again, when you go out in the job, when you land and when you start working for a firm, we don't know how the economy or the world would have changed. Maybe it would have been a different place. Maybe the customers would expect different things, right? So you have to constantly meet their expectations. And with that, the, the constant need of data and analytics becomes even more important. The reason why I wanted to share these four business problems, which are associated with digital transformation, is because I want you, you know, all of you listening here and taking out time to understand that there's there are business problems, there are real life problems that can be solved by hardcore foundational understanding of data and analytics. The work, the effort you're going to put into this learning is going to help you improve a lot of experiences for your own friends and your own families, but it's also going to get you some jobs which are going to solve real life problems, right? These modern business problems can basically 
pose roadblocks for any organizations. And it's likely the reason why you, you are looking at the digital or you as in any companies looking for digital transformation at the first place. And it is understanding of these problems right now, uh, which will help you uh, looking at the course or looking at the lessons that you're taking in an angle of problem first, solution later right you want to always understand the problem first before jumping to the solution because if you don't understand the problem correctly you might just bring up a solution that is incorrect so it is very important uh, and in the last section of my you know my my speech to you guys i do want to talk about something like what are the data analytics component that are needed for a successful digital transformation, right? So we talked about the change in economy. We talked about change in the market. We talked about the practical four problems that you can solve through data, but then what does success look like, right? What is, what is needed to be successful, right? Too often digital transformations fall short of their objectives and the reasons because it's very complex, right? But starting with data and analytics framework in mind can help you drive the program forward and ensure that you realize that there is a solid return on investment now and in future. So when you're trying to learn about data, I, I my only request to all of you here is that it often will require a cultural shift for your companies, for your future companies. Not every company is data driven. Sometimes people who are higher up in the authority will say, oh, I want it this way and they'll make it happen. It might not be backed by data. So your job as an expert, as someone who's learned data and analytics will be to go ahead and challenge this status quo, right? So just understanding the problem is not gonna be enough, but going up there, bringing a comprehensive data study to say and challenge the st status quo of somebody who's probably a little bit more senior, but you have the right data to prove that person incorrect is gonna be very key. So I, I highly uh, uh, recommend all of you to understand that data is the key and the king. Second part um, that I would highly encourage all of you to consider as you think of what will make you successful is to build a very cohesive, defined data strategy for your transformation, right? A data strategy, when I say, isn't just about data. It is about a very holistic end-to-end -end plan that, you know, that, that outlines the people, the process, and the technology uh, that is needed to use the data that you have built and use the data that you've found uh, to meet those business goals, right? So a defined data strategy can support basically the digital transformation by answering several questions like, um, you know, how can you use the data to support your business goals or solve business problems and so on and so forth, right? So it's very, very important for you to understand. So as you look uh, and, and as you look to you know, start your own journey um, in this space, I hope that you're excited, not just by the buzz around data, not just by the, the anticipation of doing something that's really awesome, but because it is important for you to understand that you are going to solve real life problems. You're going to improve the experiences of several million, billion customers around the world by data. So uh, with that, I would just want to end by saying thank you so much for listening. Uh, I do realize that this is an ever-changing market, but only thing that remains true and honest is the authenticity of data. So good luck. And um, I think we have some time, but if not, um, I can also take questions uh, through LinkedIn, as the previous speaker said, uh, but I'm also happy to answer any questions you might have now. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. It's a great honor for us and a great pleasure for us to listen to you, to this lecture. Thanks a lot. And well, the last chance to ask questions, if any. I know that it is the huge sprint that three hours we are live with our participants. But still, if there are questions, please raise your hands. Please feel free to put the questions to chat. And please do not hesitate. Please take these possibilities. Overall, it was amazing thanks a lot for lots of material for so important things because well definitely the understanding of data understanding of process understanding of business needs is of huge importance and before constructing the model you need to well, take lots of steps in order to be sure you're moving in the right way thank you for these insights
well, maybe questions as a last chance. I, I, 10, I, 5, 3, 1. I always have questions. <laughs> but what about also, others? Yeah. <laughs> if I get. <laughs> Maria, please. So you did. Mm, uh, tell me, please, uh, when. Um, you are doing uh, digital transformation in a very short time. That we know you are very good uh, to do very quick digital transformation. So uh, um, team of the data analytics and data science, uh, is it big, small, or like how it works uh, in a short period uh, with data analytics? Thank you. Yeah, that's a great question. I think when like first of all uh, it is very important to understand when you want to transform something it cannot be short right so i think the first challenge is to explain very clearly that any transformation whether it's personal whether you want to go from being excessively fat to thin uh, or uh, when you want to take company from like something that's not digital to like an absolutely a digital commodity it's going to take time uh, but but when you're trying to change a process uh, the way I, I think about that is that that could be shorter, uh, which is just one aspect of a process change. Um, but but what I would do is like, A, understand that what's the, first of all, you don't need data science for most of the week. Data science is primarily needed when you want to have a very depth of understanding of a specific business problem. In this case, you probably have a surface level understanding. So you want somebody who's a data engineer, uh, basically who can try and you know, build you know, better data pipelines and data infrastructure so that you could optimize the process much more better. Uh, second, you'd also want to focus on something that's that's a very common industry term. Most of you guys might have heard it. <clears throat> it's called MVP, right? Minimal viable product, right? When you're short on time, you don't want to build the whole thing. You want to focus on something that's small, but impactful and, uh, and kind of touches on the critical flow and the workflow, right? And you would want to focus on the data needs only for that specific workflow. Uh, and the third thing that I would do is, is, is a, uh, storytelling. I, I talk a lot, like in my other lecture, uh, on the um, the aspect of data storytelling. Like a data means nothing if you don't visualize it well, if you don't build a story around it. So I would I would make sure that uh, you know I focus on the storytelling aspect of it, so that whatever I'm doing so far is is building the narrative that that is solving a problem. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I see that we have the raised right hand. Yeah, or please. Yeah, I wanted to ask what project that you have personally worked on you are most proud of, and what are kind of like main key points the beginners should pay attention to when essentially starting out in data science and analytics, in your opinion? Yeah, um, so uh, currently, like I manage uh, a bunch of data uh, analysts. So I think the projects that we are working on specifically right now, uh, and the information that I can share is around understanding how our consumer patterns are, right? Uh, we want to know like what, what things in our product are working, what things are not. And if you can imagine, uh, that's a pretty big scope of work just to understand how every user observes and be behaves and then feed in to an algorithm so that we could predict patterns or make patterns, right? I use a lot of big words, but like when you're st starting out, what one thing I would recommend you to focus on is a understanding. At least I miss this when I when I was studying uh, is um, is understanding what is this what is actually a problem that you're trying to solve, right? Some somehow we always understand the algorithms, we always understand uh, the data structures, um, you know, the, the, the foundations of data, but we never realize how I'm going to use this in the practical world. So I would always keep that in hindsight. But second, and the most important thing I, I strongly believe you should you should consider is the data quality and the data security aspect of it. Like, it kind of buckets under, if I'm not wrong, data management, right? How do you control access of data? How do you make sure that the data is available, which is actually true? Um, how do you make sure that, you know, you're truncating data across different sources to make sure that a holistic data view is presented? So uh, just access and management of data would be one segment uh, that often gets overlooked, um, but I think it's, uh, it's a critical one. Thanks a lot. Maybe some 
other questions, if any, because I have a question also. Sure. Well, I see the raised hand. Ksenia, please. How would uh, social media affect uh, the data science in the future? As is clear. Yeah, um, I, I think it impacts everything. <laughs> Uh, data impacts not just social media, like everything, your shopping, your your social media, um, how you, who you talk to, where you talk to, even the fact that, um, you know, how you communicate and travel, right? Uh, so I think data impacts everything. Uh, I think it's an age of data. Uh, specifically for social media, I think it will curate, and in my, in my opinion, it will curate how and where you talk to people, right? Um, so for an example, if if the data tells me a story where I think that most of the people like short form videos, which is what we have seen, uh, we have seen the rise of TikTok. We have seen the rise of Instagram Reels, right? Tomorrow, the data might tell that people like leveraging, uh, or well, the data might tell that people like, you know, talking over a virtual reality headset or like somewhere that's an absolutely different space that we've not even conquered. Uh, maybe that's how our social interactions or social media would then be, right? So again, we can't predict the future, but I think, uh, I, I, I feel the role of data would be to determine the kind of experience consumers would want, whether it's through shopping, uh, for shopping, whether it's for social, you know, talking, or for any other uh, traveling needs or anything on those lines, yeah. Thanks a lot. And if I may, the last question from my side, in your opinion, what three things you actually need always to do to become the great data scientist, business analyst, for, uh, what are the key recipes to mm -hmm. receive success in these spheres? Uh, yeah, sure. That's a great question. I think like, uh, I, I, I think technologies change, uh, certain foundational behaviors uh, and, and qualities don't uh, ever, right? So few things I, I would really recommend you to do is like, even whether it's a data scientist or a business analyst, it's, it's extremely important for you to be curious, right? To understand the why, to understand, look at the bigger picture and, and find out what the underlining problem is. Uh, and that brings me to my second quality. And if, you, if, you, if you're going to hear me out correctly, you will see I'm using all qualities and behaviors because I think those are foundationals, right? And that will not change over a period of time. Um, and the second thing is patience. Uh, right, data is not an easy field. Uh, you will read, you will reach roadblocks. You will not know how to perceive the data. Um, uh, you will not be able to figure out like if this is even making sense. You will get pushed back. Um, but, but that's where you need patience to understand and and respect the data, right? Uh, so I, I I think that is a key attribute to have. And, and, and third thing is dealing with ambiguity. Uh, ambiguity is when you don't know what's happening in the space, right? Uh, so it's like de dealing with unknowns, maybe, which probably all of you are dealing already. And, and, and that's awesome, an incredible testament to all of your courage. And it's just something similar in data science field where you don't know how, if there's going to be enough data for you to predict something, if there's going to be enough data to kind of craft, uh, you know, some, some, some decision or direction based on it. So I would also believe that dealing with ambiguity and being patient and 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 to be honest uh, just the fact that this is something that you're always curious about is going to really make you uh, succeed in your careers hopefully that answers your question thanks a lot great thank you very much for the great advices which you're giving to our participants thank you very much for the honor to listen to your presentation it is really the great value for us in these difficult for our country times to feel this support to seek and to receive this knowledge from you from top experts thank you very much for joining us today thank you Daria. thank you so much thank you. i will see you guys good luck yeah. bye, bye thank you you did very appreciate <laughs> bye bye